You don't have to be a scientist to do science. Today we'll be looking at how you can add spare computing power to one of these massively distributed networks that parcels out little bits of, of tasks to computers over the world to help predict and model proteins. Particularly today we're going to be looking at how you can help in the fight against COVID-19 using a Raspberry Pi 4. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So Rosetta at Home is a massive distributed uh, program that was run by the uh, University of Washington that passes out little bits of work to computers that are running idly or today we're going to look at how you can do it on full time on a Raspberry Pi 4 and with the recent COVID-19 outbreak Rosetta at Home has been used to predict the structure of proteins important to the disease as well as produce new stable mini proteins to be used as potential therapeutics and diagnostics like the one in the picture below which is bound to to part of the COVID-19 spike protein. I don't understand what that means. I'm not a microbiologist. However, I'm, I am a computer scientist. So today we can look at how you can use uh, devices to help in the modeling of these proteins. After an amazing ARM community effort, the Rosetta at Home project released support for sending work units because it's a distributed system that sends little bits of work to lots and lots of computers, get it all done in parallel, which run 64 bit ARM uh, processors such as the Raspberry Pi 4, the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano, the Rockchip RK3399, and other small board, single board computers that have two gigs of memory. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs of memory because it is easier with four gigs there's less configuration that is required now everyone with a spare computing capacity on their arm powered single board computer running a 64-bit os can contribute to the project by running boink that's the name of the software we're going to install and crunch data and perform protein folding calculations that help doctors target the covid19 spike proteins among other medicine and scientific workloads. And to do it, you, we're going to join the Crunch on Arm team. Now, each of these, uh, when you join these distributed networks, you can join a team so that you can support your team. We're going to join the Crunch on Arm team just to show how many people are contributing to the COVID-19 spike protein modeling uh, using Arm processors. Now, Boink only supports Linux on a 64-bit ARM processor. It doesn't support 32-bit version, so we can't use Raspbian because that is a 32-bit version. So instead, we're going to be using Ubuntu Server, which is available for the Pi 2, 3, or 4. But as you can see here, you can get 64-bit versions for the Pi 3 and the Pi 4. Of course, because the Pi 2 wasn't had didn't have a 64-bit chip in it. Running a Ubuntu Server on a Raspberry Pi is easy. Just pick the OS image you want, flash it onto a micro SD card, load it into your Pi, and away you go. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you just need to click here. If you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 like me, the download 64-bit version, and then we will flash that onto a micro SD card. It's about a 477 megabyte download. So depending on your internet speed, that will take a few minutes. Okay, so I'm using Windows here. So the best tool for, well, one of the best tools for writing this uh, flashing this onto an SD card is Etcher. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The first step is to select that image that you just downloaded. You don't need to uh, uncompress or anything like that, just the file directly as it was downloaded, you can pick that. Then you need to pick your micro uh, SD card that you've put into the card. Which I've only got one, it's in drive L here for me. And then you just hit flash and that will start to copy that image file over onto the disk. Okay, so I've put the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi 4, I've booted it up, and because it is the server version, you don't get a desktop. Now you have two choices, you either just connect to it using secure shell, or you plug in a mouse keyboard and a HDMI monitor or TV and log in that way. I've discovered the IP address by using a network scanner. I found the device that's new to the network. And so here I am connected uh, using PuTTY over to that. And you log in using the username Ubuntu. And then the password is Ubuntu. And then the first time you log in, you'll actually have to change it. So first of all, you type in the current password, of course, is Ubuntu. And then we type in a new password of your choosing. You may at that point get uh, logged out. So you now need to log in again using the new password that you have set. Okay, and there we are, we are logged in. So the first thing of course we want to do is um, make sure that we've got the latest uh, repository file. So of course you do that using uh, apt-get update. And then optionally, you want to make sure you've got all the latest packages now that we've updated the repository list. So of course you do upgrade. Okay. 
Okay, once all the updates are installed, the next thing to do is install the Boink client and the Boink uh, UI. And you do that by using sudo apt or apt-get install Boink client and uh, Boink uh, UI. So I'll leave that also in the description below, as I said earlier, along with any other links that you might need. So you can cut and paste this easily. So that should be easy enough to install like that. Yes, please. And while that's installing, you need now to go over to boink.bakerlab.org and then you need to create yourself an account. So you click up here to sign up and fill in all the information uh, as required. And once you've signed up in your account profile, go over to here to community and click on team here. Find a team because you want to join the Crunch on Arm team because that's what we're part of. So I've already typed in there Crunch on Arm arm okay and then search for that and then this is the team we want to join crunch on arm so we are now part of the uh, people using arm 64-bit chips to help out this project now that the uh, boink software has been installed we can now run the boink ui program which will give us a nice program here running all uh, ASCII-fied because of course this is running from the command line. So what you want to do is press F9 to bring down the menu bar and then go over to add a project. And then of course we want to use Rosetta at home. So we'll pick that. We are of course an existing user. And then you need to type in here the username and password that you typed in uh, over there on that website. Now, first of all, it runs a quick benchmark to see what kind of computing power we've got here because of course there are lots of ARM 64-bit different chips out there, including some with 80 cores, as I've made a video about. And then once that's done, it starts downloading the files for uh, that it needs to do the computations, requesting new tasks for the CPU, schedule request, got three new tasks, and that's it. You can see out there, it has now started to download and then it will start to work. So that's it. I have now actually joined the... Uh, Rosetta at home, the folding at home project to try to do some of this computation that will help find out about the proteins and so on for uh, combating the coronavirus and COVID-19. And if you go back over to the website now, you can see that the uh, computer here, my Raspberry Pi, has been added to the list of resources that are uh, available now to the project. So you can see here, uh, it's an ARM and it's got four processors, it's a quad core, and I'm running uh, Ubuntu uh, Linux there. And that's it. So there we go, I'm done it. Now I've come back after about an hour and there's lots of downloading that's happened and the tasks are actually now running. I've also made the font a bit smaller and actually I've changed the way this thing is drawn. If you go to view and ASCII line draw here, that will actually make it a bit more presentable as I've done here. And as you can see, there are four jobs because of course it's a quad core processor. Two of them are currently running. Two of them are waiting on something. And you can see this first one is already 7.3% uh, done. And what's interesting is that you can quit the program by pressing Q. And then if you go over percent of two of the cores, the other two are waiting for something. It does lots of uploads and downloads at various times. So they were waiting. But we can see two of the cores they're running maxed out as they are actually processing these jobs. So there you go. I'm actually running on Crunch, on Team Crunch on ARM. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like. Also think about subscribing to the channel. And don't forget, I've also launched my newsletter, which you can sign up for at GaryExplains.com. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.